This is KGW News at 5. Do you want people calling the police on their neighbors, not emergency lines or 911? Look, this is no different than what happens if there's a party down the street and it's keeping everyone awake. What do neighbors do? They call law enforcement because it's too noisy. That, that could be a yes. Yes, yes. Um, but Our top story at 5 honestly, o'clock tonight, days before Thanksgiving, Oregon's governor encourages you to call police if neighbors are violating COVID restrictions in their homes. The governor's words come as the state hits a new daily high in COVID cases. The governor also had strong words for her critics who've called her freeze unconstitutional. Here's Maggie Vespa. Known as the freeze, Oregon's latest round of COVID restrictions, which includes capping the number of people allowed inside your own home, comes complete with enforcement, arrests and fines if necessary. Friday, Governor Kate Brown said that's, that's not acceptable. just a hypothetical. Do you want people calling the police on their neighbors, not emergency lines or 911? Look, this is no different than what happens if there's a party down the street and it's keeping everyone awake. What do neighbors do? They call law enforcement because it's too noisy. That, that could be a yes. Yes, yes. Her point, um, all the more pivotal, honestly, given the criticism uh, the governor has faced. Second rate slaves. We'll get to that in a second. First, the freeze, implemented this week via the governor's executive order. For the next two weeks in Oregon and four weeks in Multnomah County, residents are banned from eating out at restaurants and going to the gym. And just in time for Thanksgiving, social gatherings in our homes are limited to no more than six people. Violators could face up to 30 days in jail, more than $1,200 in fines, or both. It, it's not just that it's not constitutional, it's not even common sense. Critics have been blunt and their tactics have gotten national attention. We do not need to be treated as second rate slaves in our own homes. Also Friday, the Marion County Sheriff's Office sent out a press release pushing for education over enforcement. It read, we recognize that we cannot arrest or enforce our way out of the pandemic and we believe both are counterproductive to public health goals. So I know you see this as well. Governor Brown said Friday she believes in an education first approach, too, and she hopes penalties aren't necessary. That said, she had a message to officials who criticize her for employing the option. Look, all of this is irresponsible. These are politicians seeking headlines, not public servants trying to save lives. My top priority as governor is to keep Oregonians healthy and safe. We have too many sporadic cases in Oregon. We can't trace these cases to a particular source. We have to limit gatherings and social interactions. Our interview with Governor Kate Brown, which we posted online in its entirety, came as the Oregon Health Authority was giving its daily COVID update. Friday, the state reported a record high 1,306 new cases. I'm Maggie Vespa reporting, KGW News. And Oregon again broke the record for new cases of COVID-19 today. The state reported 1,306 new and presumptive cases. And that comes a day after Oregon reported, as Maggie mentioned, the last new daily record of more than 1,200. You can see here a steady increase on the daily case curve. Multnomah County again had the most new cases of any county in the state with 337 cases. Four more people have died. Providence hospitals are preparing for a wave of new patients by setting up surge tents outside their emergency departments. The hospital system is also bringing in temporary mobile morgues. In case they're needed, they'll be set up at the largest hospitals, Providence, Portland and St. Vincent. Providence calls that a worst case scenario, but after seeing other hospitals around the country run out of mortuary space, they say it's important to prepare. The Oregon Health Authority said it will change the way it counts COVID testing. The move comes after KGW exposed a big discrepancy between the number of people tested and the number of reported tests. Pat Doris reports. Since the COVID-19 pandemic swept into Oregon, it's been followed by the state health authority with a computer system set up to track infectious diseases, but it was likely not expected to follow anything the size and scope of this pandemic. Until now, that system only counted new people getting tests. 
So if someone got a negative test a month before, they were not counted in daily numbers when they returned for another test unless they were found to be infected. Governor Kate Brown told my colleague Maggie Vespa that the method is approved by the CDC, but she agrees it should change. I now have been tested three times, and because of how we've been calculating it, uh, that's only once in the system. And that worked at the beginning of the pandemic. I would argue that it's not the best measure for now. And so the state will now start to count the total number of tests each day and report that. You may be asking, why does this matter? Well, the change significantly lowers Oregon's positivity rate. That's the percentage of people who tested positive on any given day. And it's an important metric to gauge how fast the virus is spreading. And also a key metric on big decisions, like allowing in-person schooling or when businesses should be restricted. Under the old method, the positivity rate was nearly 13 percent. With the new measure, it's down to nearly 7 percent, which state leaders say is still too high, but that's a lot closer to the 5 percent deemed stable. And while we're talking about testing, the state still cannot answer a pretty basic question. How many tests are available on a statewide basis each week? How many are used? And how many are left over? It's an important question because there are workers who could proactively be tested much more often if there's extra available, and there's disadvantaged communities that still need more tests. Dr. Melissa Sutton said it's hard to figure out how many tests are available because many tests are sent out to national labs. And here's one more interesting gap in the state's testing results. Leaders say roughly 113,000 tests are performed each week in Oregon. But under the soon-to-be old system, results show only 50,000 people getting tested a week. That's a gap of 63,000 people tested but not counted. I asked the doctor if she really believes 60,000 people a week were coming back for repeat tests but not being counted. I do. Uh, when you think about the fact that almost one in four Oregonians have been tested to date, I think it makes sense that we've seen the pool of people who can be counted shrink pretty significantly as our case counts have skyrocketed. Since the pandemic began, testing has been a rough spot in Oregon's response. The numbers the state reported put us near the bottom nationally for testing, even though state leaders say we're really on par with most other states. Nine months in, Oregon is making a change that might begin to tell that part of the story a bit more accurately. I'm Pat Doris, KGW News. Oregon has some new help available for people who may be struggling financially in the pandemic. It's a mortgage relief program. It offers a one-time direct payment to mortgage services to help make accounts current. $20 million total are available. To qualify, applicants must have been past due on mortgage payments after January 1st of this year. For more information about the requirements and how to apply, visit OregonHomeownerHelp.org. In a really tough year for retail, a Portland toy store goes from providing fun gifts to cleaning up from a break-in. John Goodwin tells us it's the latest of many business break-ins in Northwest Portland. Sunshine, a welcome sight this morning on Northwest 23rd. I mean, I love owning a business on Northwest 23rd. I think we are the OG of the shopping districts in Portland and owning a business on Northwest 23rd is literally a dream come true. Kate Noreen owns Mud Puddles, Toys and Books. Her favorite thing? When people come in and buy those, they're giving them as most of the time for gifts or to celebrate something. So I feel like we get to be a part of that child's story. Unfortunately, last night she learned being in business is no longer all fun and games. It was very upsetting. It's just been a tough year, tough week. So then to have somebody throw a brick through your window is not, you know, when you think things can't get much worse. Somebody throws a brick through the window. A puddle of glass outside the front door that is now boarded up. Kate says it's not the welcome she wants for customers who come in to peruse, but a little broken glass isn't going to take the wind out of her sails. Oh, you can find toys from literally age zero to 100 plus. We have a huge selection of puzzles right now. That's been, you know, a main, new mainstay for 2020. Picking up the pieces will be relatively easy. Nothing was stolen and it appears they were looking for cash. Today it was business as usual in a time of year which can really make or break a store. Please remember your neighborhood retailers. We're all trying to do different ways to shop 
Kate has sympathy for whoever broke in. There's desperation out there in weird times. Portland police say there have been at least 10 other burglaries in the Northwest 23rd area since early October. The pandemic is taking a toll on the whole community, but Kate is staying positive to keep that magic inside alive. You know, whether they're opening that up for their birthday or they're getting, they just got a great grade or they got their immunizations, you know, there's a reason that they're celebrating and we get to be part of that celebration. In Northwest Portland, John Goodwin, KGW News.